C-SPAN is now available in over 100 million homes, bringing you a direct link to public affairs, politics, history, and nonfiction books, all as a public service, created by America's cable companies. Washington Journal continues. We want to welcome back to C-SPAN's Washington Journal, California Representative Brian Bill Bray. He represents the 50th District. Republican, thanks very much for joining us. Great to be here. We want to turn our attention to immigration, most notably the Arizona law. Today you have filed a brief in the court, federal court, supporting the law. What does it state? Well, what it really states is that the federal government's lawsuit against the... Um, against Arizona is very, very misplaced. They, the fact is, is that it points out that um, the executive branch is now claiming that the, the crime or the, the infraction that Arizona and the people of Arizona have committed is that they have taken away the right of the federal government not to enforce the law, which is an interesting concept. Um, frankly, what's happened is there was a position taken politically to oppose this law somehow. Um, before they even read the law, it's obviously, because what they claimed their concerns were um, when they started um, is, are totally different than what they presented in this, this piece of lit litigation. So summarize the Arizona law. What does it state? What it states is basically that, first of all, what it really does, it outlaws sanctuary cities. And if the and that's a case that we really ought to talk about is the fact that... Which are what? Which, which are cities that say, tell law enforcement you cannot... Um, ask anybody about their their um, uh, legal residency. You cannot, if you find somebody that you think is illegally in the country, you cannot refer that person to ICE or any federal agent. Basically, it's a shield law against the enforcement of the immigration policy. The Arizona law says no elected official or administrator can tell law enforcement they cannot uh, follow up on, on um, actions they think is prudent and effective. They would do for any other crime officers to treat immigration the same way. That you cannot um, tell officers they cannot cooperate with federal um, immigration agents. So it really, uh, that was the big issue that really set people off on this. The other issue is basically, little, the little things that are sort of interesting, things like it's illegal in Arizona now to stop in a lane of traffic to pick up a day worker, something that you and I would say was common sense. But really the, the, the matter is saying that in the due course of your job, if you um, stop somebody for, for an offense and in that um, due course you then realize that this person is probably not legally in the country, you have the right, um, in fact, the responsibility to follow up on it. And that's really what it comes down to. Basically applying the immigration law like we would anything else. A good example is um, bank robbery is a federal law. And we don't attack police officers for showing up at a bank robbery. What this says is that you should respond to um, probable cause for violation of immigration law like you would any other law. James on our Twitter page saying that sanctuary cities are going to be an interesting test for Obama's immigration policy. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely, because I think it really shows um, the contradiction of this whole litigation that why would you sue somebody that is passing laws that are almost completely parallel to your own federal law and say that, oh, they're superseding our jurisdiction when you have ignored, like, you know, all of these sanctuary cities that have been blatantly violating the intention of immigration law by you know, specifically legislating obstruction of, of cooperation with the federal government. That really shows a, not just a hypocrisy, it shows selective enforcement, where, um, which is really a major issue about the law, that you pick to enforce the law or prosecute one group, but not the other group. Let me ask, a, 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 add a political note to this, a piece yesterday in the Washington Post about the issue of immigration in the midterm elections and the 2012 presidential race. As a, a veteran of California politics, you know that uh, your former governor, Pete Wilson, took a hit on the issue of immigration. And so does this issue help the Democrats in the midterm elections? Is there a concern that this could hurt the Republicans? Well, first of all, let me say, I think the politics of it has played up too much. Um, sadly, but it is an important sector. Oh, of the it electorate. is a, for for the next election. The trouble is, when we talk about this issue, we're talking about, you know, what where, what are we going to leave for our grandchildren? And so, when we talk about is it good now, everybody's trying to be too smart by a half on this issue. I think that it's good for politics and good for the country if we stand up for the rule of law. We say fairness is fairness. Those who play by the rules should be treated um, um, fairly, those who break the rules should not be rewarded for breaking the rules. It's a kind of a basic concept that any one of us who are parents would never do the same with one of our children and would not allow our children to do otherwise. 
then we think that somehow it's intelligent or it's politically smart to do something different as a nation or as a, um, a political party. And I think both parties have been really, really, um, you know, uh, should be very faulted for the fact they've played politics with this issue rather than just being straight and narrow, being fair and equal, but don't look the other way and don't find justifications not to do a common decent thing like, say, We'll reward those who play by the rules, and we won't reward those who break the laws. We'll get to your calls in just a moment. One final point, though. President Bush put forth a plan that would uh, allow a path to citizenship, as he called it, for illegal immigrants. Do you or did you support that idea? Uh, let me tell you something. I was born and raised on the border. There were two houses between my childhood home and the Mexican border. I was uh, a county supervisor and saw what happened the last amnesty. The president might have been in Chicago. He didn't see what happened. To do another amnesty, to do another program that says those, of, those who are illegally in the country will be accommodated with a special program, to do that is the biggest mistake we could ever do again. And it was one thing for Reagan to make that mistake because they hadn't tried it before. But now for Obama or any other president to propose this after the experience. And let me, you know, something we don't talk about. Since the last um, amnesty we did, the last time we legalized people illegally in this country, there's been so much flow coming across that hundreds of people have died every year coming to this country. We actually have, just since 98, we've had 4,500 people die trying to come in here. And I'd just like to ask Mr. Obama, will he go down to the border and recover the bodies like I've had to do? Will he be responsible for that action? I think the biggest problem, those actions, and I just have to ask the president, how can he ask somebody not to come here illegally if he's going to announce that he's going to have a special program that only those who've broken the law get to participate in. So do you support deportation? I support strongly the, the enforcement of the employer verification. There's where you want to do it. Let's stop paying people from being part of the process. And I do support that when somebody is brought into custody who was illegal, once you, that somebody does happen to go into contact law enforcement, yes, you do deport them like you do with any other immigrant who's not legally present. We do that all the time. We find overstays. That's something you do. But the first step is let's do some employment enforcement location because let's be fair about that. The real source of illegal immigration is not the border. It's the illegal employers who are hiring people and exploiting them. And that is a, something that we've got to really talk about. Our friends and our neighbors who are hiring the illegals, exploiting their cheap illegal labor, they're responsible for those uh, thousands of deaths along our border that have occurred since the last amnesty. They're the ones that we should be saying it's not sustainable. You can't continue to operate with an economy based on continuing to bring in cheap illegal labor to exploit just because you're making a quick buck now, not looking at the long-term impacts. Our guest is the former mayor of San Diego, former San Diego County Supervisor, and now chair of the Immigration Reform Caucus, Representative Brian Bilbray from the 50th Congressional District. Jeff is joining us on the Democrats' line from Crown Point, Indiana. Good morning, Mr. Bilbray. Good morning. And Jeff, let me clarify. I was a mayor of Imperial Beach, not San Diego, a little community right on the border. Thank um, you for that clarification. We'll uh, Pete that. Wilson would really be mad at me if I was trying to claim that title. Go well, ahead. I want to say uh, this morning, uh, you know, you're right on the money. Um, you know, uh, the rule of law has been in place for many administrations. So it's just not an Obama problem. Uh, you had uh, President Bush who tried to bring something about. You had uh, President Reagan who tried to do the same thing. Let me, let, 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 me, let me touch on the greatest point that you just gave up. If you would take companies in Arizona who wanted that cheap labor, and they did, and they got that, and that's how you got all of the people in there. It all starts with cheap labor, and it started, excuse me, I hate to put it on the party, it's because it's both of them, but it started with Republicans. And it started with corporations overlooking that they were bringing people in for cheap labor. Now, here it is. If you really want to stop uh, illegal immigration in Arizona and in any, in any other state to come in and, and enforce the rule of law, then this is what you do. Any corporation, any company that is found hiring illegals, don't go with a fine. You put these people in prison because that's what they're doing, is it? If these people know that all of the time that they can get cheap sources of labor and then turn around and only be penalized for it or, or a marginal a penalty, then believe me, they're going to continue to do the same thing, and the American people and the taxpayers are going to suffer. These people have to be dealt with in a criminal matter, and I guarantee you if they're looking at prison time for hiring illegals into their company, 
undocumented workers, I will guarantee you, you will stop. All of the other stuff that they're talking about, about a fence, charging American people for putting up fences and all of this. If you don't have any place to be able to work, believe me, people will turn around. Jeff, I'll leave well, it there. Let, let me say, Jeff, you know, you're right on about the fact that we need to focus on who's really profiteering from illegal immigration and those who are looking to work it. And frankly, both sides have fault. But traditionally, big business is exploited. But let's just say about Arizona. Arizona now is, is doing an emergency thing. They are, they are defending themselves. But two years ago, Arizona did the responsible thing that no one could take a shot at except for those who do not want to see any kind of effective enforcement. Arizona required that every employer in Arizona have to use the E-Verify, that they have to check on a computer and, and check the name and the Social Security number matches. And let me tell you something. Every member of Congress uses this system. And I assure you, if Congress can use a system, anybody can do it. And Arizona did that. Now, let me point out, though, that when they did it, they were sued then by the same crowd that doesn't want any enforcement and Arizona won then, just as they're going to win now. And, and frankly, if the rest of the country had gone with that E-Verify, it's not a technical issue, it's very effective, but why are people holding up the E-Verify process? And even the Obama administration now is requiring all contractors to use it. Massachusetts just passed a law that says all contractors to use it. If we did that, we could draw a very bright line between those who purposely hire illegals from those who might accidentally do it, and that way we can really crack down on the, uh, the illegal employment. And his Shuler of uh, North Carolina, he introduced a bill. There was a Democrat-Republican bill. Over 230 um, members of Congress supported it. If Nancy Pelosi put that on the floor tomorrow, it would pass. And the fact is, there's a bipartisan bill that address it. And there's a, there's a secret weapon here, too, that most people don't think about. Think about all the businesses that are hiring illegals and then deducting that expense on their tax return. And in Heath Shuler's bill, it makes it illegal for a business to deduct the expense that they have, they have spent on hiring illegals. And now, when you've got the IRS, not the INS, looking at these big businesses, that will put a fear of God in them. If you live in Arizona, California, or one of the other southwest border states, uh, we have a line set aside for you at 202, the area code here in Washington, D.C., 628-0184. Dick is joining us from Houston, Texas, Republican line. How y'all doing this morning? I guess California is having a uh, Lindsay Lohan moment right now. And it's not only jobs. These people are stealing Social Security numbers. They're stealing IDs and stuff. And uh, uh, I just want to make a couple of quick comments, then I want to ask you a question, sir. I mean, because right now we know because of Line 11, uh, security has been tighter, and because of the spill in the Gulf, I think they're trying to pass this bill because they need to get their drugs through Mexico into the United States, sir. And can you comment on how much federal land is owned out there where you all live and stuff? Because I think that's one of the reasons why uh, they're getting ready to try to do what they want to do. And one more Try, time, trying to do, do what uh, specifically, Dick? Pardon me, sir? Trying to do what? Uh, as far as they, they own a lot of federal land out there, so they're going to try to use uh, uh, this against uh, Arizona saying that they can't enforce these laws because a lot of that land out there is federal law, and they're not going to try to let them enforce that. And I know these people work hard. I know a lot of people want to want to keep them here, but how did California go from the fifth money-making economy in the world to 25? And thank you, sir, because I'm glad that you won. God bless you. Fight the good fight. Well, God bless you. And let me just say that, look, it would be one of those bizarre situations where the federal government says that federal law, uh, immigration law, cannot be enforced on federal property. That's an interesting concept. But they, we've seen a lot of uh, misconstrued stuff on here. And let me point out, there was, there's a lot of unsung heroes of this issue you don't talk about. There was a Border Patrol agent who talked to a congressman named Ken Calvert back in the 90s about why don't we use computer technology as a way to be able to help people know Social Security numbers and they match. And Ken actually took that. And Ken Calvert is sort of an unsung hero. I think you hear a lot of people scream about this issue and get real, real hot about it. But there was a guy who just quietly has worked on a program that is, is you know, over 98.7% effective. Anything in government that's that effective is extraordinary. But we've got to understand, too, it's a program that does not discriminate, does not ask the employer to decide, is this person a U.S. citizen or not? 
Everybody talks about they want to stop profiling. Then why not embrace E-Verify because it makes sure that everybody is treated equally no matter what. And those who are truly worried about discrimination should be the first people pushing to have E-Verify a universal application. Because right now, under the alternative program, an employer has to decide, does this person look like a U.S. citizen or not a U.S. citizen? I think that I just can't believe that the civil libertarians aren't embracing the E-Verify as a way to make sure that no one is judged by the color of their skin or their dialect or any other physical appearance. Everyone is treated equally, and that E-Verify is the one way to be able to do that. Except those who do not want the system to work do not want E-Verify implemented. Well, as you're talking about that, Ann had this question that most people agree with you on the E-Verify and the employer rules, but what about the millions already in the U.S. illegally? The Which goes back to an earlier point. And the first step is this. You stop people paying them to stay here. Even the Obama administration has taken the policy that they do not need to transport people out of the country. They basically need to employ them. Right now, the Obama administration is not taking any illegals um, into custody. They are basically just requiring employers to fire the employees. Now, I think that one of the things that I always love to bring people up to, if you create a program that says if you're illegally here you can participate in this program if you do that and do not offer the same proposal to those who have been waiting patiently to immigrate you will not be able to build a fence big enough to stop the next wave to come in and so my my question first of all is what are we going to do with the twelve to twenty now what are you going to do with the twelve to, to sixty they in the next ten to twenty years are you going to now make it a policy that every ten to twenty years we're going to give an amnesty just because we really can't stand up for the rule of law and be willing to tell people, you come here legally, we will do everything we can to work with you and help you. But if you come here illegally, do not expect to have any more rights than those who have been waiting patiently. And I'd, let me tell you something. I'm a parent of five children. Any parent will tell you that the only thing worse than rewarding a child who broke the laws or broke the rules uh, is to reward the child who broke the rules in front of the children who've been playing by the rules. Because then the children that have been playing by the rules, those people around the world have been waiting patiently. They're, they're basically being told, we're crazy to do this. this is, America does not respect playing by the rules. They, they reward you for breaking the rules. And we don't want that signal sent around the world. And believe me, they listen. Around the world, they listen. I spent a lot of time in Latin America. They watch the news. They know exactly what our president says. And every time that President Obama or President Bush talked about an amnesty or accommodating, they were basically being told by their friends, coming up now because you'll be able to be first in line and, um, if you break the law, and you'll be last in line if you play by the rules. A comment more than a question. Mr. Mr. Bill Bray knows well the immigration problem. He comes from a sanctuary state who is bankrupt. Chris joining us from New Mexico. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning. Um, I think basically this law is counterproductive. I agree with you that we need to prevent employers from hiring these people. Um, you've, you've, had, you've had this law you know, bound up. I mean, the Republicans will, will not let something like this pass because the Republican Party is run by people who own the businesses that exploit these workers. And this law merely makes them more exploitable by driving them deeper underground. And we end up with a border that looks like the DMZ between North Korea and South Korea and, uh, and a totally underground um, economy of illegal workers. Uh, that are afraid to engage law enforcement or emergency uh, medical facilities. Uh, and I just think it's counterproductive. Chris, what part of the state do you live in? I live in southern New Mexico, about 90 miles from the border. And just one other point, as you well, well Chris, know, along Chris. the Arizona border, it's 360 miles uh, along the border and 306 miles have a fence. Yes, yeah, and in fact, you remember San Diego, my, actually my backyard, we had we had people being being drowned and slaughtered on the highways. In fact, the first fence along the border was down the middle of the freeway because the freeways were being used. Up. But but Chris, all I got to say is, if you don't think that the medical facilities are being used by illegals, come to San Diego. One county at 600 million was estimated um, by by the um, uh, by the hospitals in the region, and we're talking about in L.A. 75 percent of the Medicaid births are to those who are illegally in the country, and you can't expect them not to. But the problem is, is that you are, they are expecting 
that they're going to be rewarded in many ways, and we just got to stop sending that signal. And it's not just a signal to those who are here, as I said before. They're watching. The people crossing the border that are dying every day, I said, equal to a, 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 a jet um, crashing at the border. Every year, it's equal to a, a crash jet down there. How can we continue to sit there and ignore that and, and just basically say, well, it's okay. It's cheaper to have a gardener this way. It's easier to be able to have cheap labor this way. It's not sustainable, as we say in the environmental community. And that's the biggest question that we've got to get across. And so the cost is something that's passed on. These employers are passing it on to the rest of the communities. And that's a dirty little secret that's not being talked about. Next is uh, Dale joining us on the Republican line from Newport, Rhode Island. Yes, good morning. Um, bye. Um, our state, Rhode Island, has E-Verify, but only for government projects. Uh, it needs to go across the board for all employers. Um, that's a good program. It works. And right now what we have is a case of a reverse discrimination. Myself as American and other Americans, we get background checks on us, and we apply for jobs, but it's, uh, they get a free uh, brain, and, and they don't have any checks on them, checks and balances, and it's, it's wrong for Americans. Well, I, I, it's not just wrong for Americans. It's dangerous for everybody, and the fact is, and they've got those who say, well, the one way we'll make them not illegal anymore, let's make them legal. Um, and that has got to be one of the most bizarre concepts in the world because I keep wanting to ask. People say, what are you going to do with this? What do you... How are you going to not do it again and again and again? And, and it's like any, anybody will say that you've got to maintain the rule of law. It's not an easy thing to do sometimes. Sometimes it's tough to draw the line and say, this is legal and this is illegal. And I'll tell you something. My mother was an immigrant from Australia. And I'll tell you, I think every legal immigrant takes a bit of offense at people trying to mix legal and illegal immigration. I think that's an insult to everybody who plays by the rules because it's tough to be a legal immigrant. But to sit there and then act as if there's no difference between those who have played by the rules, went through the process, and actually participated in the process, as opposed to those who basically, you know, came across. And uh, let me stop, stop a second and say one thing that isn't talked enough about. I'm chairman of the Immigration Reform Caucus, but I'm also chairman of the Central American Caucus, because I think if those of us that want to stop illegal immigration need to talk about stopping the employers, the, the pull, but also stop the push in our own backyard. We spend so much time and money worried about Asia and Africa and Europe, and um, we almost ignore our own backyard of places like Southern Mexico, um, uh, Central America, and, and Latin America. And I, I really think that part of this process is for Americans to remember that our backyard is actually um, have, will have a lot more to do with our grandchildren's future than what happens on the other side of the globe. And I wish that the State Department, our own people, would. Um, spend more time there. We spend less than 2% of our foreign aid package in our own backyard. Uh, that tells you where our priorities are. So as part of that process, Congressman, Mary says, why not say to anyone in the USA illegally when immigration reform passed can never get citizenship or legal status or HB visas? Well, what you, but you can't then, well, you immediately have the argument like they had before that now you've created a permanent um, you know, underclass down the line. And, and uh, so you've got to make a very bright line that there, there is the right way and the wrong way to come to this country. If you want to come here and stay here, then go home and play by the rules, come through the process, at least do the paperwork through your country and play by the rules. But the fact is, is that this whole concept that once I'm here, I don't have to um, leave. I don't have to play by the rules. It's almost, you know, almost a kid's game of saying, tag, I have this ground and thus I'm, I have the right of possession of the United States soil because I'm in this country illegally. And remember, 40% of those illegally in the country didn't come here illegally. They were allowed in and then they overstayed. Are we to now say to them, oh, don't worry about it. We'll allow you to stay here permanently while you have people every day that are being required to leave this country because they're playing by the rules, their visa is expiring. This is a concept that Americans just do not think about because we're so much involved as a great nation and we don't see the, the fact that this country has people coming and going and we want that. I mean, I get in trouble with a lot of my colleagues. I believe truly that we can have a true guest worker program in this country, but not, not one that hides itself as an amnesty program where people come here, work and go home and be able to maintain their families and their communities in their own country, but able to come here and work on jobs that we have chosen as an American people and as American family 
that are surplus that we're willing to work out. But when you have a country where you have over 14 million unemployed and you have 12 to 20 million illegals in this country, don't tell me that there are not jobs there that American people would love to fill. Mary Kay is joining us from Phoenix, Arizona, Independent Line. Go ahead, please. Hello, uh, Brian. Um, I'm with you there. I, uh, my company's called Bilingual Services, LLC, and I, I, after 30 years of being a job counselor in human services stuff, now I sell insurance. But as soon as I say I'm bilingual, now it's almost a dirty word. They think that I'm pro, uh, you know, for uh, breaking the rules or whatever, but just because I speak Spanish doesn't mean I, um, I'm still... I'm still rather conservative, if you will, but I'm going independent on this comment just so that I don't, um, you know, have to take any sides here. I'm trying to stay neutral like Switzerland. Um, I've helped a lot of people get jobs. I still help a lot of people get jobs. But in Arizona, I've watched how uh, it's become such a political debate. We all know this. And it, to me, in my perception, seems like we're getting punished for... Um, trying to do something because I think that after Janet Napolitano was our governor and she went over there, it looks like she, um, she flipped on us and isn't really helping us. That's what it seems like. And also our president, I don't think he likes these old white guys over here either, but uh, I just wonder if you could comment a little bit about how we're sort of being a pawn right now in Arizona. And I'd like to extend my hand if you can find me on Google at Bilingual Services LLC. Thank you very much. And look, Arizona is the victim, and now they're, he's, they're, being, they're attacking the victim. Is that, I, as I said before, Arizona is fighting to defend its neighborhoods. If the federal government had been doing its job, if the, if the Republicans and the Democrats had done the right thing in Washington and followed Arizona's lead and done E-Verify. I mean, why is it such a uh, terrible thing just to check that the Social Security numbers and names matches? That's extraordinary. And Arizona did it. It's working so great that you're actually seeing big changes. There's been complaints in Mexico about people coming home and about the, the, the income shrinking. Um, because the people aren't working in Arizona f illegally. Um, and so if we had followed that, Arizona led and they're being punished on this. And I got to apologize to you in Arizona because I was one of those San Diegans that stood up and demanded that we build this security fence, that we have resources. And believe me, the people that said we could not secure the border in San Diego are the same ones attacking you, same ones who every time you try to do something, they get attacked. And, you know, the American people really are looking. They don't care. They don't trust the Republicans or Democrats because they say you always find reasons to put it off. And frankly, here's a good example. Why hasn't the Social Security number, I mean, the card, which has been in existence since 1937, has never been upgraded? Every state in the union has upgraded its ID cards. But the federal government, which requires the Social Security card to be used as an ID for employment purposes, won't upgrade it. And how do you justify that to the American people? I guess the real message to anybody about what they want to do with this issue is understand that Congress and Washington has not um, deserved the trust, has not earned the trust to do what we need to do with this issue. And, and we need to do the heavy lifting. We've got to be willing to crack down on the employers, take away the tax deduction, um, improve our federal um, identification systems, do the right thing first before we start promising anybody another whole big reward package um, like that's being proposed. I'm going to come back to this issue because Anne has been very persistent on the Twitter page and others joining in the conversation on those undocumented illegal workers already in the U.S. And you've touched on the employer aspect of it, not uh, uh, making them uh, employed, but will somebody please ask the congressman how the GOP would deal with those undocumented illegals already in this country? Well, I'll tell you what the GOP ha has done is they've, they've avoided the problem in the past. I think that now they're going to be forced to say um, when we find people that are illegally in the United States, we do what we have always done, uh, just like we do when they find somebody with an ex expired passport who is illegally in the country. We take them into custody, take them to an ICE facility, and we we end up um, deporting them through a process. We, we actually have those ICE facilities. Uh, I don't understand why we would say that we're not going to do that as a country now when we, we th that is the law, that's the policy. Now, the politicians may block it. The other issue, though, is that... What, what, what if they have children in this country? If they have... Look, we have people that are, that are um, deported in this country every day that have children. I'll give you... You know, I always pointed out that when my mother 
Uh, my father was stationed overseas. My mother um, had to leave the country for a while. I left with my mother even though I was a U.S. citizen. Now, we went to Australia, and it wasn't that bad when we had to come back to Philadelphia. Now, that was pretty tough for somebody from San Diego. But the fact is, you always have the family together one. And when, that, when somebody is not legally present, they are deported. It's always been that. It's just like saying that when we enforce any other law, we don't exempt the enforcement of a law because somebody is a parent. We've, equal protection under the 14th Amendment requires that those with children or without children are all treated equally. And I don't know if we're ready to start creating special exemptions for parents over those who may not have parent, uh, children. Troy is joining us from Houston, Texas. Go ahead, please. Hello. I'm, uh, thank you both for, for uh, being on there, the, uh, standing up for what's right and truth. Um, C-SPAN is the fact that you guys are willing to uh, um, allow both sides of the topic being discussed is just wonderful. But anyway, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I wonder if, if we the people, since the government is supposed to be for the people and of the people, why can't we file suit against the president for his frivolous uh, lawsuits against us, using our tax money in the governments to fight something that we the people are for? The vast majority of the people have shown that they are for fighting this uh, illegal immigration, and that's without even the majority realizing that the uh, that the uh, many, that some of the people coming across there are not just Hispanic, but they're coming from Islamic countries. Well, we've had, we just had a big scare because we actually had a terrorist caught right in Tijuana, just um, a few a few miles where my uh, my uh, children live. And um, so this issue is coming down. I was down in um, Panama, and the, uh, the Panamanian officials were telling me that they are now seeing many Somalians coming in um, into Panama and jumping off the ships in Panama, and they're catching them as they're moving north. So we don't know what's going on there. But uh, look, there's no alternative to a secure border. I guess the biggest thing I, I need to try to get across to people that you'll never be able to stop people from crossing in massive droves across that border as long as you do two things. As long as you allow the employers to hire them and entice them to come here and die trying to get here. And you talk about rewarding them with permanent residency if they're here illegally. And so I just got to keep telling people that, got to understand, just the talk of rewarding illegal immigration is enticing people to risk their lives where you've got, like I said, since 98, over 4,500 people die. Are, are you willing to take the responsibility for those kind of deaths because you're not willing to say clearly and be, be defined of that America stands up for the rule of law. We're not going to give in on this one more time. We tried it before, and it was a total failure and cost people's lives. If you want to come here, play by the rules. We'll develop a system that will allow you to come here, be a guest worker, work, contribute, take those, those uh, profits and be able to keep your family working in your own community. That kind of program we should be able to work with. And I've been attacked for proposing that. But we can't do that until we shut down the illegal employers because you have somebody come in, in to um, you know, pick avocados and they end up hanging drywall and, and they, they work in the construction trade. And there's a lot of Americans who want those construction jobs. This is not only our right to do this, this is our responsibility. And it's a federal responsibility. We stick our nose into a lot of issues that the Constitution doesn't say our jurisdiction, but this is our jurisdiction, and Arizona has been a victim. And now to have the federal government attack Arizona for trying to do something about something that we've been ignoring, I think, is, is really um, not, not only um, inappropriate, I think it's immoral. We're talking with uh, Representative Brian Bilbray, who represents uh, Southern California, including the San Diego area. He filed a friend of the court yesterday supporting the law in Arizona. We're, of course, talking about immigration. This uh, comment from Dennis Lane, who says, how about we deport the politicians along with illegals that they refuse to deal with? Well, I think that, um, I hate to say it, but I, I might be one of those you end up deporting. I, I really enjoy Latin America. I spend probably most of my casual time down there. Of, uh, it's sad that the border's gotten so ugly that um, for a Christmas break, I take my children to El Salvador rather than into Baja, where we've always gone. So that just shows you how out of control the border has come. And our lack of enforcement on our side of the border is a major problem there. And I wish people would understand that. You see the thousands of police officers being killed in Mexico. And then we sit there and say, oh, yeah, but we don't want to have our National Guard at the border. Mexico's had their army at the border for 15 years. 
what's, a, what's kind of a double standard here. At least Mexico recognizes how out of control the more people have to die and be killed before we wake up and understand this is a responsibility that the federal government is supposed to address. Congressman Bill Bray of California, thanks very much.